Hello, I'm Tim Gray, a trainer for Video to Brain and also publisher of the Ask Tim Gray email newsletter and Pixology magazine. I've had a few readers recently who have asked about applying an effect from Photoshop Elements using the full version of Photoshop. It relates to using layers and masks in order to create what's called an out-of-bounds effect. In Photoshop Elements, an out-of-bounds effect is available as a guided edit, and it allows you to create the effect of an object that's popping out of a photograph. Let's take a look at how we can accomplish a similar look using Photoshop. I'll start off by defining the area of this image that I want to include in my snapshot. In other words, the area that I want to include in the overall image that my grotesque here from Notre Dame in Paris will be jumping out of. I'll choose the rectangular marquee tool from the toolbox and then I'll simply click and drag in order to draw a box that will define that snapshot. Now to add a little bit of depth to the final result, I'm going to transform the shape of this selection. I'll make it look like a print that's going a little bit away from me. So from the select menu, I'll choose transform selection. I can then hold the command key so that I can adjust a corner individually, but I'm also going to hold the shift key so that when I drag the top right corner downward, for example, I'm not able to drag it left and right. I'll make sure that it stays in a straight line. I'll do the same thing for the bottom right corner, holding the command and shift keys on Macintosh or the control and shift keys on Windows as I drag that edge upward. Now, if I need to move my selection while I'm in the middle of a transformation, I can certainly do that. I'll go ahead, for example, and drag my selection upward a little bit to allow a little more room for the Eiffel Tower. And then I'll again, control shift or command shift and drag the top right corner downward a little bit and the bottom right corner upward a little bit. I also think I'll narrow up the overall selection by dragging the left and right edges inward just a little bit. That looks to be a pretty good effect. So I'll go ahead and apply that adjustment by clicking the commit button on the options bar or double clicking inside the transformation box or pressing enter or return on the keyboard. As a basic starting point, I'm going to mask the image based on this selection. In Photoshop CS6, I don't have to convert my background image layer to a normal layer in order to do that. I can simply click on the Add Layer Mask button and the layer will be converted for me automatically. In previous versions, I would need to double click on the background image layer thumbnail first and click OK in the New Layer dialog and then add the layer mask. As you can see, the layer mask has been created based on the selection, and so only the selected portion of the image is currently visible. I also want to add a little bit of an old-fashioned frame, a white frame around this photo to make it look more like a snapshot, and so I'm going to create a selection based on this existing layer mask. I'll start off by holding the control key on Windows or the command key on Macintosh while clicking on the thumbnail for the layer mask on the layers panel. And that will load that layer mask as a selection. Next, I'm going to enlarge this selection to create the border area. So I'll choose Select, followed by Transform Selection once again from the menu. And now I'm going to hold the Alt key on Windows or the Option key on Macintosh while I click and drag one of the corners so that the selection will grow outward from the center point. I'll then make reference to the corners of the image, looking all the way around the corners of that selected area. And I'll adjust the position of my mouse as I drag in order to try to ensure that I have an equidistant border all the way around the photo. That looks to be pretty good, so I'll click the Commit button to resize that selection. I can then use this selection as the basis of a new layer with a layer mask that will add a white border. I'll go ahead and create a new layer, and then I'll add a layer mask based on the selection. I'll rename my original layer the background, even though it's not a genuine background layer. And I'll rename this new layer as border. In both cases, just double clicking on the name of the layer and then typing a new name and pressing enter or return. I'll then click on the thumbnail for that border layer to make sure that the pixel layer, not the layer mask, is actually active. And then I'll choose edit fill from the menu. I'll make sure the Use pop-up is set to white since I want a white border, and I'll click OK in order to fill that layer with white. But of course, that white is only visible based on the border layer mask that I created. 
The only trouble is this border is currently covering up my background image layer, and so I need to move its position. I'll simply drag the thumbnail for the border layer down to below my background layer, and that gives me a nice border effect. Of course, I also need to make some modifications here. I've cut off the grotesque here. I want to make sure that that grotesque is visible up above, but I want the grotesque to essentially block out that border. To start that process, I'll create a selection of the grotesque. So I'm going to first turn off my border layer to get that out of the way, and then I'll also hold the shift key while I click on the layer mask associated with the background image layer so that I temporarily disable that layer mask. I'll then choose the quick selection tool and I'll simply click and drag across the grotesque in order to create a selection. And I don't need to select the entirety of this grotesque. I only need the top portion of it because that's the only area where it overlaps with the border of our print, of our border effect. So I have all of the selection that I need. I'll go ahead and shift click once again on the layer mask associated with my background image layer. You can see the selection remains. And what I want to do is fill the selected area with white on the layer mask so that the grotesque will be revealed in that portion of the photo. So I'll click on the thumbnail for the layer mask associated with my background image layer and then choose edit fill from the menu. I'll make sure the use pop-up is set to white and then I'll click OK. So now that layer mask is filled with white in the selected area so that the grotesque is entirely visible in addition to the rest of the photo that I've defined with that layer mask. Now of course I want to make sure that the grotesque is blocking the border, that white border that goes around the image, but because the grotesque is on a layer above that border layer, that was just taken care of for me automatically. So now I have a grotesque that appears to be popping out of a snapshot. I can also add a background gradient effect or just fill the background with another color to help things stand out just a little bit better. I'll go ahead, for example, and click on my border layer, the bottommost layer, and then I'm going to hold the control key on Windows or the command key on Macintosh while clicking on the create new layer button at the bottom of the layers panel. That will create a new layer below the currently active layer. I'll go ahead and rename this layer to Gradient, and then I'll choose the Gradient tool, and I'll go find an interesting and colorful gradient to fill in with the background, and then I'll click and drag across the image in the direction that I want that gradient to flow, and with the distance that defines how far a transition I want, and because the gradient layer is active, that gradient will be painted onto that layer, which happens to underlie both of my other layers. So I now have a gradient background, a border effect, as well as the photo that's been modified to fit. If I'd like, I can even add a drop shadow to that border layer. I'll go ahead and click on the border layer on the Layers panel, and then click the FX button, and I'll choose Drop Shadow from that pop-up menu, and then I can specify the settings for the drop shadow that I would like to add to the image. I'll go ahead and reduce the opacity of that effect. I'll add some spread and size so that we get a little bit more of a faded effect. And I'll maybe reduce the distance just a little bit. I'll reduce the opacity a bit more. And when I'm happy with the result, I'll go ahead and click OK. So you can see now we have a little bit of depth behind that print as well. So now I have that out of bounds effect. My original image looks like an old snapshot complete with a vintage border. And yet the grotesque appears to be popping out of that image. A very cool effect. It takes a little bit more work with Photoshop compared to the relatively automated process in Photoshop shop elements, but the key is that through the magic of layer masking, the process is indeed possible. And yes, in case you were wondering, this is indeed a grotesque at Notre Dame, not a gargoyle, because it does not have a rain spout.